Hi, Sandro here. I recently learned about an engineering marvel that I just could not wait to show you. So here's a spontaneous unplanned video about it. When looking at this shot of a departing chair, you'd probably never guess that it is accelerated in a way unlike any ropeway you've probably ever seen. In fact, it has much more in common with a roller coaster than with a conventional ropeway. The engineers behind it came up with the idea to build a chairlift with a garaging procedure that should be twice impossible. In this video I'll show you how each of those impossibilities were overcome thanks to some cool ideas and great engineering. With the steadily increasing speed of gondola ropeways and chairlifts now easily reaching 5 meters per second, it is no longer possible to enter or exit a chair or gondola at its cruising speed. For this reason, ropeway manufacturers have come up with ways to detach the vehicles from the rope at the stations. If you're from the US, you will call the rope a cable, it's the same thing. After the detachment from the rope, the vehicle is slowed down to a speed that is suitable for boarding and unboarding. After completing the slow section, it is accelerated again and reattached to the rope to continue its journey. Here is a poor animation illustrating the acceleration process. The circles on top represent the tires that are pushing the gondola forward. The black line at the right symbolizes the rope to which the gondola is attached to at the coupling point. A darker circle means a high rotation speed of the tire it represents, so as you can see, on the left hand side the circles are fairly light, so slow speed, and on the right hand side at the coupling point maximal speed, namely exactly the speed to match the rope's velocity. This technology also enables to easily detach all the chairs or gondolas from the rope to store them away during bad weather or during the night, and many operators are making use of this feature. Modern ropeways are often able to almost completely automize this process. For an in-depth documentation of that, watch my video about the garaging in Pietstal. Now it seems pretty straightforward that for garaging you obviously are going to need a building called a garage where you store your vehicles in. However, as mentioned earlier, this particular chairlift is able to garage itself without an actual garage building, which is the first seemingly impossible thing to do. So if you were a ropeway operator, where would you store your chairs to protect them from precipitation if you don't have a garage? After all, you do want to take them off the rope for the night, but in this case there is no extra circuit where you could store them at. You only have two roofs at your disposition top station and the bottom station, so why not just push them all together and store them under one of them? Ok, so that's actually fairly obvious, but why don't we see this more often? Well, because of the way that typical detachable ropeways are built does not allow to do this automatically. Let me explain. The part that decelerates the chairs or gondolas is actually fixedly connected to the rope. There is an element that picks up the energy from the rope and it's all powered by one same motor that also transports the vehicle on the rope around. All of those tires are linked together with belts that make each spin a little slower than the last. As the vehicle is detached and then passes over the tires, since each one is a little slower, the vehicle is decelerated gradually, which is the effect that you want to achieve. On the other side is the exact same procedure, and as each wheel turns a little faster than the previous one, the vehicles are accelerated again. All this is done entirely mechanically. The station that you are seeing here has absolutely no motors powering the seats. The motor is located at the bottom station and if that one stops spinning, the rope stops spinning, then the energy harvester stops spinning and then the wheel stops spinning. That also means that you can have the ropeway operating at arbitrary speeds. Since it's all mechanically connected, the tires will just rotate in relation to the main rope's speed. You can stop at any time, there's absolutely no need to sync the parts together because they are connected and they form one single machine. That also means that the distances between the chairs are kept, you cannot have the chairs move closer or further from each other. However, since no mechanical system is perfect, there is of course a slight drift that needs to be corrected. Over time, different evolutions of clocking mechanisms have been implemented. Here is an example from an older chairlift, where the tires hand over the vehicles to a belt. That belt has fixedly spaced teeth that pick up the vehicle just at the right moment and this is how they are clocked correctly to keep the distances intact throughout the day. On this more modern gondola ropeway a computer tracks the position of each vehicle as it moves in the slow section. 
If a vehicle is too close to the previous vehicle, the computer has the ability to stop a single tire and then make the vehicle wait until the distances are good enough. So small clocking corrections are state of the art and that's a problem that has been solved for many years. But none of the solutions that you can typically observe on a ropeway would be able to achieve such an alignment. First of all, they lack the complexity and precision required for such a perfect alignment. But more importantly, the slow section of the station does not have enough space to accommodate all of the vehicles. In fact, the vehicles are stored also in the accelerating and decelerating section. But that should be completely impossible. Remember that to work properly, these sections have to have tires where one spins just a little faster than the other one. Therefore, having a computer watch the position of each chair and stopping a single wheel just in time is just not feasible. So what kind of sorcery did they come up with to make this possible after all? Well, it turns out that only the outermost tires are directly connected to the rope. All of the other tires are disconnected from this system. Instead, they are grouped into small sections out of which each is powered by a powerful motor on its own. On the normal operation, the computer precisely calculates the position of each chair and makes the section rotate just at the right speed. That means that the speed of the tires of each section is periodically increased and decreased again to match the speed of the adjacent sections. When the chair is about to enter, the section must spin at the exact speed that the chair will have at the moment it will enter the first wheel of that section. It will then have to increase the velocity quickly so that the chair beneath it is accelerated. At the exact moment the chair touches the last tire of this section, it must have sped up just enough to match exactly the velocity of the next section. Of course, that next section has slowed down to match our exit velocity and then will in turn again increase its velocity to fit the next section after it. The whole thing is a bit complicated, so let's look again at a poor animation. Again, the velocity of each tire is indicated by its brightness, where light means slow and dark means fast. In contrast to the conventional accelerating and decelerating sections where the velocity of each tire is constant, in this case you can see that the tires change velocity all the time. Note the incredible complexity of the handover process as each section must exactly fit the next section at the exact moment when the gondola passes beneath it. This beautifully orchestrated and perfectly timed process seems to be from a sci-fi movie. However, today's computing power and the precision of modern control systems have allowed this crazy idea to become an actual reality. For the unsuspecting passenger, the acceleration phase of this ropeway feels like any other. Little do they know that a computer built in this chairlift has as much control over its tire sections as the computers built in a modern roller coaster. With different programming, the flexibility and sheer power of this assembly could easily give them a ride they would never forget in their lives. To make sure that this will never happen and the ride remains boring and enjoyable, the systems are highly redundant and are equipped with a variety of fail-safes. As you can see, this is no ordinary ropeway. With all this 21st century tech packed in its bottom station, it can make the impossible possible, which is an automatic garaging under its accelerating sections. So let us discover this revolutionary process. While the lift is stopped, the operator switches the mode to garaging and then engages it. The computer keeps track of the count of vehicles in each section and stops the chairs at the beginning of the section that is about to be filled. At the exact moment when the next vehicle is about to exit the previous section, the current section is suddenly accelerated to match the speed of the previous section. The arriving chair is then handed over and the current section stops again, waiting for the next vehicle to come. 
This process repeats until the target count of the section has been reached, after which the previous section will be filled up. Can you imagine the precision of these sensors and the perfect orchestration of all the independent controllers required for this delicate choreography? The programming of the garaging process alone took days and is pushing the controllers to their capacity limits. Since the outermost tires are still directly connected to the rope, the main motor speed must also be regulated as part of the process, affecting the rope and thus the entire top section as well. So the whole ropeway's velocity is rammed up and down every time a chair is about to be handed over to the first standalone section. You can even hear the main motor ramping up after a handover. With the counts being complete, the ropeway has just shut itself down, locking the brakes. Tomorrow, the computer will be tasked again with sending the chairs back out on the rope with the most exact spacing between them. It will execute this task once again perfectly, like it has been doing on every beautiful winter's day since its inauguration. So that was the impossible garaging, made possible after all with some fine engineering. I hope that I could get across at least some of this chairlift's awesomeness and that my explanations were more or less understandable. I'd like to thank very much Cyril and his team from the Leuchtenraltbahne for letting me film and making this video possible. Actually, the shots in this video are just a fraction of the footage collected that day and I'm still working hard on the massive chairlift comparison video that I promised earlier. There's still much work left and I thank you for your patience. So that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.